let's uh, demonstrate it uh, with our favorite example of the pendulum system and uh, the dynamics of this uh, pendulum system are given over here uh, the parameters m l and k these are uncertain and uh, we have also bounds on the state variables x1 and uh, x2 uh, these are uncertain uh, however their nominal values are the average values can be easily computed uh, generally it is uh, convenient to take the average value uh, of these uh, two extreme values as the nominal nominal value so m hat uh, is m hat is the average value of 0 0.2 and 0 0.05 likewise l hat the nominal value of l is equal to 1 nominal value of k is again the average value of uh, this uh, and this value which is 0 0.025 and now here is the procedure for the design of controller uh, we define the sliding surface and uh, compute this delta uh, so delta delta is given over here by this expression a minus g over g hat uh, this thing is g uh, which is written over here 1 over ml square divided by the nominal value of uh, this g hat uh, the uh, nominal value of g which is over here multiplied by a from here multiplied by x2 plus h h is written over here uh, this part minus g over g hat this is g over g hat multiplied by h hat h hat is uh, given over here the nominal value of uh, this expression this g is gravitational constant and this g of x uh, so again you know uh, do not confuse the two things this uh, this g uh, is the term which is being multiplied with u, uh, u and this uh, g is uh, some gravitational this is gravitational constant so we need uh, an upper bound on this delta of x uh, we can simply rearrange the things to write in this way uh, what we have done is that we have collected the terms containing x2 so this term is, uh, is written over here and also the term containing x2 uh, this is the term containing x2 this is the term containing x2 so these are written together over here uh, simply rearranged we have taken 1 over ml square common from all the terms and rest of the terms are written over here likewise the remaining terms uh, th this term and uh, this term these are written over here since we need uh, upper bound on this expression so you know how to find the upper bound on this expression we apply the triangular inequality to reach to this expression uh, this expression is less than or equal to this expression the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this thing so here is plus sign even though here is negative sign uh, here are the nominal values and uh, bounds uh, on the uncertain parameters and we substitute these things As you remember uh, while computing the upper bound here a, a, a has been taken to be equal to 1 uh, and m uh, which value we should, we should substitute since we are computing upper bound on this expression so here the upper value of m should be substituted likewise the upper bound on l should be substituted over here and here is the nominal value of uh, m hat m hat the nominal value is over here l hat uh, is the nominal value of uh, l which is equal to 1 and likewise uh, what should we substitute over here lower bound uh, to get this bigger number we should substitute lower bound of k and l over here because here is negative sign so lower bound of k is 0 and lower bound of l is 0 0.9 and these are the nominal values x2 uh, is uh, less than or equal to 2 pi it comes from this expression and likewise we substitute uh, 
here the upper uh, bound of M and L. So all these values are substituted and uh, you can make uh, all these calculations. Uh, it comes out to be equal to 1.83. Hence uh, our control action uh, is given over here. Uh, rho is uh, less than or equal to 1.83 and beta is equal to rho plus beta naught. So beta naught uh, is taken some positive constant and therefore beta of x comes out to be equal to 2, uh, slightly larger than 1.83. You can of course uh, take it some other value uh, of beta naught as well. Uh, so and the control action, final control action is given over here a x2, a is taken to be equal to 1, x2 minus h hat, h hat is written over here, this is the nominal value of this expression divided by g hat minus 2 into signum of s. So after substitution of these values, finally you get this control action uh, which is composed of uh, a continuous part plus a discontinuous part. What you observe is that the magnitude of this discontinuous part is reduced. Uh, in the previous case, uh, when, uh, we when we had uh, used uh, conventional sliding mode control, this was 4 and here it is 2. Magnitude of the discontinuous part is reduced and that will uh, result into reduction in the chattering. So let's uh, demonstrate uh, this thing with the help of uh, uh, simulation. Uh, here we have uh, implemented the conventional uh, sliding mode controller and here uh, we have uh, utilized uh, this control action, uh, the continuous part plus discontinuous part with reduced magnitude. Uh, here it is implemented. Uh, this control action, this is the x1 plus x2. So this is sliding surface, signum of sliding surface minus 2 multiplied by signum of sliding surface plus the uh, uh, this continuous parts which are written over here. So uh, the dynamics of the actuator are, are, are also considered in both the cases and uh, we can uh, simulate uh, uh, here is the plot of uh, all other uh, uh, variables as well. Uh, this was the case uh, when you have not incorporated the dynamics of the actuator that is when you had implemented the ideal sliding mode control. Uh, ideal sliding mode control in that case there was no chattering and uh, as soon as uh, we reach to the sliding surface the trajectories uh, slide on this sliding surface to reach the equilibrium point at origin. Uh, when we have utilized uh, this conventional sliding mode control and also incorporated the dynamics of the actuator. This was the situation. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you had a chattering effect and uh, this is the implementation uh, and here is the phase portrait. Uh, still, uh, you have chattering, but the magnitude of the chattering is reduced. And that is also obvious from the plot of control actions. Uh, here is the plot of sliding surface for ideal uh, sliding mode control. Uh, we reach to the sliding surface and then uh, S stays equal to 0. For the case when you incorporate the actuator dynamics and uh, use the conventional sliding mode control, uh, you reach to the sliding surface but uh, the control action is not ideal, actuator is not ideal. It takes uh, some time for the control action to uh, reach uh, control action to become to equal to zero. So it becomes equal to zero at this time. But now we have crossed the sliding surface. The control action bring back the trajectories to the sliding surface. But again, uh, it uh, crosses the sliding surface and this uh, uh, is uh, uh, oscillating. And uh, here again we have chattering, but the magnitude of the chattering is reduced plot of the control action. Uh, average control is plotted over here because the system dynamic systems will respond to the average control action. And uh, here in the case of ideal uh, sliding mode control, there is no chattering. Uh, while using this control action, 
uh, we have uh, chattering phenomena and even in this case we have uh, the chattering phenomena however the amplitude of the chattering is reduced uh, here it was oscillating between a uh, value of minus 4 and uh, plus 2 and here it is roughly uh, maybe uh, between uh, minus 3 and uh, 0 or something uh, larger than 0 yes there is some question uh, control law control law is actually the same here here the control law is this one minus 4 into signum of s the only difference is that here we have uh, not incorporated the dynamics of the uh, the actuator we have considered ideal actuator that is as soon as uh, uh, starting uh, we reach to the starting surface the control action becomes exactly equal to zero here we have incorporated the dynamics of the actuator as well uh, that is uh, we reach to the starting surface control action uh, this thing e uh, this this thing becomes equal to zero but the actual real physical control action that is not zero that becomes uh, therefore uh, it crosses the trajectory uh, this uh, starting surface the tra trajectories cross the sliding surface. So this is the first approach for uh, reduction of the chattering effect uh, and here it is summarized. Uh, we use this control action which is composed of a continuous part plus a discontinuous part. Continuous part depends upon the nominal model and this uh, discontinuous part is up, uh, given by some upper bound on this thing and since uh, this delta is smaller so this upper bound uh, row will be smaller hence uh, this uh, discontinuous part will be smaller and therefore the chattering uh, will be uh, reduced uh, in this next lecture we shall talk about uh, uh, another approach uh, which uh, can be utilized for uh, reduction or uh, even elimination of the chattering phenomena this will be discussed in the next lecture inshallah so any question up to this point.